many people are truly happy tonight? And how many people are always happy? Believers are the happiest people on earth. <laughs> Not that things don't happen that we don't like. But we have decided that we have control over how we respond. Glory to God. Glory. One of the things that you have to know is the fact that, thank you choir, you have control over how you respond to all situations. So don't give away power to someone else and say, I was provoked to say this, I was provoked to do that. I have given several examples along this line many times in this church. The same you. You can collect a baby from a friend and the child slaps you with both hands. Bam. You don't get angry. But then someone else slaps you and then you are angry. You have just received slaps on both sides. It means that, you know the meaning of that? It sounds funny, but the truth is, that means it's not about the slap. It's about your interpretation of the slap. Something tells you that this one is insulting you, and then you, this one you interpret to be that it's just a child. Parents know this very well. So, there is a child. Your daughter is four years old. You have come back from work. And she's pulling you, Daddy, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And she's watching cartoon. You are not going to get angry. You will get her something to wear. She's four. But the same you coming back from work. And your daughter is 19. And she crosses and says, Mom, I'm hungry. You will respond with five-fold ministry. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? But then... Number one, they are both your children. Number two, they have made the same request. But your perception and the way you interpreted it, are you getting what I'm saying? Everything in life is that way. You can choose how you respond to everything. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have your seat this evening. Jesus is Lord. And is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Listen, we add shape on Sunday, and I feel like saying this to everybody if I start tonight. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6 1, or 7 Corinthians 6 1, he said, We then, as workers together with him, beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Responding to the word of God. You know, I sent a message to leaders on after Sunday. I told the leaders, I said, all of you that have opted for uh, dry fasting, long days, don't do that. Let's all do morning till evening. So you can do that in your private time, maybe when the old church is not, so that all of us can be on the same page all through the month praying. I want to explain this to you, and this is very important. I want everybody to get this. If this is all I get to say tonight, please look at me and those who are watching and pay attention to this. Responding to the word of God. Saying yes when God says you should say yes. Saying no when God says you should say no is more powerful than 40 days of fasting and prayer. I'm going to give you a practical example that will help you. So, 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1 says, Do not receive the grace of God in vain. And what I just want to share with you, part of it is how not to receive the grace of God in vain. So, many years ago, that will be maybe 60, 70 years ago, a pastor taught in the church and he read a passage of the Bible where the Bible says Jesus went to the house of a girl that just died and he said, Talita Kumi, meaning young damsel or damsel girl of damsel named for a young lady. And the girl got back to life. And the pastor said, everybody can do that because Jesus said, the works I do, you can do, and greater works. 
And there was a 21-year-old or 18-year-old boy in the church by the name Benson Idawosa. He was the only one that responded to the grace of God. Now, Paul was warning that do not receive, he said, I am beseeching, that means I'm begging. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. Any grace that comes on you that you don't use will evaporate in no time. The same Paul said in Galatians 2, the last verse. He said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. That word frustrate there is, I do not set aside. How do you, how not to frustrate the grace of God is to use the grace of God. If you don't use it, you are frustrating the grace. So Paul put, if you use a better translation, he said, I do not set aside. I do not set aside the grace of God. I operated by the grace. I didn't receive it to collect and put it aside. And that's what many people do. So only our bishop that day. So when the service ended, he was waiting after the service. I just I said, sir, excuse me, sir. Welcome to the pastor. Did you say Jesus raised it? He was just, this is how, you know, I told you the one that I want to pray for. So somehow, God works with people who don't have traditions or religion. Because religion can be a problem. So a person wants to ask God to do something and she begins to think, I haven't done well today. I have not prayed enough. I don't think, this is why, see, Lord help me. I might still be a young guy. Maybe older ministers would have been more qualified to pray. The but thank God that the word of God is older than me and all the ministers who could have preached it. And I want to tell you something very profound tonight. It's out of concern. Listen to me, everybody. I was a young boy, at least the latter part of SU Revival in Nigeria. Thank God I got born again early in life, GSS 3. And the people that were at the forefront of SU Revival were our teachers in school. Sincerely speaking, nobody was talking about extreme dry fasting. Nobody was talking about ancestral spirits of demonic power. All believers were taught that. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They had the audacity. The audacity was so much that we, that were students, began to do the same thing. I've not been casting out too many demons now. I don't know, maybe the money people don't show up again. But in secondary school, it was a regular thing. And would have gone to play ball. But they told us, and we believed, and it worked perfectly. I saw. A thick man's voice coming from a young lady. Secondary school boy. They didn't tell us that this one is a very powerful spirit. So you need this. Of, thank God they didn't tell us. I came from a background of a white garment. That's not to say white garment is wrong or right. I'm just saying that the way it happened when we were growing up. I drank egg. I took river back. Thank God they did not tell us. They forgot to tell us that we needed deliverance when we got born. Thank God they forgot. Because we have never needed one till now. If that happened now, ah, you drank this, it must come out. You drank that, but if any man be in Christ. What is the call tonight about? It's a call to tell people to pay more attention to the word of God. More attention, more and more attention to the word of God. So Paul said that we do not, we said, we didn't receive the spirit in vain. See, in John chapter 4, verse 24, the Bible said that God is a spirit. And they that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is not flesh and blood. God is a spirit. But you know what? God needs flesh and blood. So when God wanted to come to the earth, he needed flesh and blood. He needed a woman by Mary. It has always been that for God to operate here or not, he needs men. That's why we pray. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he did not give back to himself, even though he created the first man. But he came through the womb of a woman because God needs a man. I'm praying that this divine partnership, which is the beginning of what I want to say, will be understood by everyone. God needs you. So when... Uh, this guy, Philemon, saw it. So, let's read Philemon 1.6. Philemon was a very wealthy man that Paul wrote to. Because Paul wrote that letter because 
Philemon had a servant, a slave called Onesimus. Onesimus ran away. In those days, you must not run from your master. He ran away. And while he was away, he met Apostle Paul, and Paul converted him. Fortunately for him, his boss, Philemon, was saw Paul's protege. So Paul wrote a letter to Philemon that see, Onesimus who ran away from me is with me right now. He said, I'm going to send him back to you. Don't take him as a slave anymore. He's now a brother. And he said, remember, Philemon, you owe me. So do this for me. That was what led to all the letter in Philemon. Now, verse 6, Paul said something there, which is very important. Philemon 1, 6. Hallelujah. Do you always enjoy the word of God here? Yes. Let me go back to the instruction I gave. See, when it, any teaching you hear, do something about it. Any teaching you hear, do something about it. That the communication of thy faith might become effectual. If you have amplified, I would like to read from there. You know, God is as big as you make him to look like. That's why I like that song. I, I have taken you to small in my heart. You can make him, and that is what religion does. We make God so boring. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective and powerful because of your accurate knowledge ah, of every good thing which is ours in Christ. You know, there's something about the Bible. It's always giving answers in details. The Bible says the sharing of your faith. So all of us can go out and share our faith. In our families, we are sharing our faith. In the place of work, we are sharing our faith. And the Bible says, it will, be, it will become effective and powerful. That means, this is how to be a powerful witness for Jesus. The Bible did not say, I will become a powerful witness for Jesus when I don't eat for 30 days. The Bible did not say, I will become a powerful witness for Jesus when I stay seven days on mountain. Always take God by his word. Go by his word. The Bible says, what makes the sharing of your faith powerful? What makes it powerful is because of your accurate knowledge of every good thing. Ah. So in Christ, there are good things in Christ for us. And the Bible says, when you start getting to know them, you become all of a sudden a very vibrant Christian. When I saw the scripture properly, I began to understand things like men like T.L. Osborne said. Many years ago, he said some of us don't pray through this, not to pray, he said because we are true at all times. Ah, yeah. He said, I have gone to my demonic village. I just entered and began to pray. 200,000 people will gather, miracles will happen. He said, I don't pray true before any crusade. I am true at all times. And they asked him one day in the breakfast, he said, because I am conscious of who I am in Christ, what the word says. He said, that is all that rings in my heart when I'm standing before a demon. I don't need any preparation than to know what Christ has put inside me. If the Bible tells you that to get to Yaba from here, go through this place, stay with what the Bible says. So the Bible is saying that the knowledge, so you can fast and pray for the knowledge of the word, that is acceptable. When you fast and pray for knowledge, when the knowledge enters you, you will do wonders. In other words, it is better to fast and pray for knowledge than to fast and pray for wonders. Because when the knowledge is there, wonders will flow naturally. <laughs> Did you get that? Yes, sir. That was why when Paul was praying for the church in Ephesus, Ephesians 1, he said, he began to pray that the eyes of your understanding might be flooded with light. He said, this is the beginning, this is the best way to pray for a new Christian and every Christian. So the Bible says, the communication, sharing of your, all of a sudden, you are no more a passive Christian. 
even the words coming out of your mouth, they are so strong. Oh, sh hallelujah. One man of God said he was in the room and there was a situation. He just began to say, but first John 4 17 says, As he is, so am I in this world. As he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. When they reboot demon, they jumped out. And as he is, so am I. When I reboot them, so they have to go. When you are speaking like that to yourself, your spirit is based here. Remember, God is a spirit, but it needs your body. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. How exactly do we acknowledge good things that are in us in Christ Jesus? Very simple. They are in the world. But how do we get into the world in a proper way? Number one, Hebrews 12, looking unto Jesus. That is our model. You see, I want to call on everybody today. So when this fasting started, I made my mind that I just want to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again. Looking unto Jesus. Don't only read about Jesus in the Bible. Focus your attention on him. A time comes. So you can meditate to the point that you are reading about how Jesus opened the blind eye. You can actually begin to see yourself standing before a blind person or a blind situation and you are speaking. A man said that he read so much of when David said, Thou comest against me with sword and spear, but I come against in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of the children of Israel. He was thinking and thinking out like a flash. He saw himself there standing before a giant, himself instead of David. And all the issues intimidating him in life were bowing. And a few days after that, no problem was found again around him. You see, you can journey into the word of God. It's an adventure. A sweet one. It will produce what can never be produced any other way. Let me give you an example of how powerful this can be. I told you before. Bishop Boyedeko said, when they told them to move, when he needed to move to Canaan land, the old Songo was a forest that time, from Rajoba, and the question was staring him at the face. Who will, who will go from town, Lagos, to this place? Even the elders told that this is the end of the church. People won't stop coming to church. And as he was praying, he spirit, looking for a word. Then he got where the Bible says, John was in the wilderness, and they came from him from all quarters. How many years has he been there for? You see, every word you discover is like a key. You don't need extra prayer to make them working. Once it is given to you, it is given once and for all. Till Jesus comes, multitudes are going to Canaan land on the strength of one word. If it's on the strength of fasting alone, you might need to repeat that fast. Maybe every month, every now and then. Once a word is given, because the word of God does not fail. It endures forever. Once it is given to, it stays forever. Hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's begin to copy Jesus. And I'll close with this. The best way to do that, remember, people used to say that, what would Jesus do in this situation? That's what I'm going to do. It's a good thing. The problem with that is that you don't know what Jesus will do. Jesus was very unpredictable when he was on that. Because Jesus functioned by something. A carnal man cannot preempt what Jesus will do by calculating. Jesus functioned by the Spirit. And that Spirit is still here with us today. Amen. Did you get that? Yes, so in John chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus said something there. John 5, 19. Thank you for your latter rain. Healing the sick. Confirming your words. Thank you for your latter rain. You know, I have a witness in my spirit. Many signs and wonders will be performed by all of you here. Remember what I started with. Do not receive the grace of God in vain. As soon as this service is over, a situation might show up in your office tomorrow. 
stand with boldness and address it. Before someone walk out of this place tonight, you need to make an audacious statement with boldness. What you have been afraid of, make an announcement against that thing. I stand to say in the name of Jesus, I'm getting married before the end of this year. Words like that don't just leave your mouth. They stay in the atmosphere around you. Make a very powerful statement. Justify this message by doing something. Don't let it go. I like some already speaking under their breath right now. And I am sure. Ah, yeah. That was why Paul would say, all things work together. This rent will be paid. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Mercy cities built. Then answered Jesus and said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Every time Jesus said, Verily, verily, he wanted to say something very serious. The son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the father do, what he sees the father do, whatever things he does, this also the son. So Jesus said that, you do understand, there is a reason why we entered the pool of Bethsaida and there were multitudes of sick people there and I only healed one. He said, it is not me. Left to me, I love all men. A leper said, if thou will, you can make me keep clean. Matthew 8. Jesus said, I am willing. Build thou, and he became well. That what shows his own heart. That means any sick he sees, it, he is always willing to heal them. But on a particular day, he only healed one person by the pool. So he told them, I see, it is not me. He said, what is going on there? He said, Father, I am seeing what he's doing. I am only repeating what is already done in the spirit by the Father. And he wasn't talking about the Papa on the throne. Because later he explained to them the Father he was talking about. Hallelujah. He told them about the Father in John 14, verse 10. Let's read. He was talking about, he said, this, this is John 14, 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself. Again, he said, I say, it is not me. But the Father that, that is the Holy Ghost. Jesus referred to the Holy Ghost as his Father. Is it your Father? He said, the Father that dwells in me. There is a Father of Robert. He said, the Father that dwells in me. He said, any reaction you see, anytime I respond to something, it is not what I am trying to do. There is somebody inside who controls so in other words, to do what Jesus will do in any situation, you must know the Holy Ghost. He made Jesus to do what he did. He will make you do what he made Jesus to do. Did you get that? That was when Paul was ending 2 Corinthians, the last chapter there. He said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. Unfortunately, we have turned it to a creed the communication of the Holy Ghost be with you. The grace is always from Jesus. The love for God so loved the world is always from God. He said when it comes to the Holy Ghost, it is communion. This is why we sit down and thanks, Lord, we thank you. You are praying a prayer of communion. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for coming to my life to make my life beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. You said in your name I cast out devils. That's why devils can't stay around me. I have authority. Thank you because by your stripes you have made me whole. Jesus, I thank you. You think of me at all times. I am more than conqueror. That's what your word says. I am, you are the light of the world. Say, anyone who follows you will never walk in darkness. I follow you, Lord. I don't walk in darkness. I see true life. My decisions are pure because you dwell in me. You know, not many people pray that way. Olua. <laughs> Any meeting where the teaching goes this way, 
the presence of Jesus is mightily felt. On the crusade ground, if we begin to talk about Jesus, it will manifest. One day I was studying the book of Acts of Apostle. Again, I did not see them saying that days of fasting before talking to any spirits. Then I saw that it's because of the kind of message they carried. The Bible emphasized repeatedly. Philip went to Samaria and preached Christ. And demons were jumping on people's body. Because he was talking about the Alpha and the Omega. But the password, like my brother told us, is Christ. Christ. The password is not ancient of this. We honor him. We go. The password. Why? The Bible said that in him it has pleased the Father that the fullness of God should dwell. Christ. In Christ alone. It's all about him. Christ alone. At the mention of his name, not the mention of Zuri Shaddai. Those are powerful names of God, no covenant, and they say apply, they are powerful names. But the Bible says he has put in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. There were names. And these names were in classes. He said to Abraham, I am El Shaddai, Genesis 17. Then later he said to him, I am Jehovah Jireh, on the mount of Lord shall be seen. Or Abraham said that anyway, called him Jehovah Jireh. There were names. But when God called Moses, he said, I'm about to send you to Pharaoh. You are not going to use El Shaddai. He said, I am Jehovah the Lord. He said, by my name Jehovah, Abraham didn't know that part. That means I'm giving you a higher name that I gave to Abraham. Then later he called himself Emmanuel, God with us. Names evolving from generation to generation. But there is a name. I think it is in Psalm 139 that the Bible said that thou has, you have exalted your word above all your names. If you see that scripture, I'm not sure, I think Psalm 139 verse 2 or so. You have exalted your word above all your names. So what the Bible is saying is, if anybody that finds that scripture, let me know. All those names are powerful names. All of them. Sometimes, outside the service, I pray for people by faith. But sometimes, I pray under the anointing. I feel the anointing. And I'm feeling it right now. Maybe because of the topic we are talking about. It's amazing that under this simple service, cancer can disappear. And I believe that people are being touched right now. Whether you desire a child or everywhere, put your hand, put your hand on your belly if you desire a child. If you desire to step into, whatever you desire right now, you can, for other things, lift up your right hand and in the name of Jesus Christ. The ministry spirits are responding to people right now. And miracles are being received right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone's liver is being touched. Every part of your body. Not only for healing. Also the gift of the spirit are going on right now. The spirit of God is touching people. La grosis kelemanda. Thank you Jesus Christ. Yokes are being broken. Great doors have been opened in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me close here. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all. All thy name. So that means you have magnified your word above Jehovah, above El Shaddai. Above Zuri Shaddai, Zuri Shaddai means the rock. Jehovah the rock. Above Zuri Shaddai. Above Emmanuel. You have exalted your word. So there is a base limit. All your names are like this. But the word is above them. But which word? Is today communion? Cool, sire. Which word? When he told them in the Old Testament, they didn't know that. Like, which word? Which word? You have spoken many words. So which word is above all your names? They did not know that there are words, but there is the word. So until John chapter 1, 
In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. The Bible said the same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. Hush. Oh. <laughs> the word. Then they started understanding. Oh. The word is not the letters we'll be reading. There is someone called the word. He is the one that is above all other names. You don't know? In the book of Revelation from chapter 1 to 22, you will hardly see where, it's, where Jesus is mentioned in heaven. They don't call him Jesus in heaven. He is called the word. So what God did, he created heaven and not by the word. That word was Jesus. He fashioned everything by the word. That was Jesus. And he said, I want to introduce man to this word. But if I say the word, there are many other words. They might not get it. So he put that word in a name called Jesus. So the name of Jesus is equal to the word. And that name is the name that is above every other name. Glory to God. Send this message around. It will bless many people. And any service you attend, and the direction is going this way, take advantage of it. You can begin to receive right away. Because, oh, Caruso, Kanda, Baya, Kushte, Letre, Kizo, Paraskelemondo, Ligo, Suze, Karash, Telemanda, Rabaya, Eris, Kolomondro, Kuseketes. A man of God said that we don't pray the power down. He said, we preach the power out. We don't pray the power down. We preach the power out. We don't pray the power down. We preach the power out. Release yourself to the Spirit. He's doing something there tonight. This is the communion we have come for. There is a name. Karo Satalabaya. Rendo Kosiya Baluse. Those who are watching in the name of Jesus, use the name. It's above all other names. Oh, Shalamanda Labaya. Let every other name fade away. Let all, every other name fade away. Just release yourself. Let the Spirit do what it's doing. Shukalabaya Basetake. Rabba Shato Kobo Setekes. What some have not been able to free themselves from with all kinds of activities, now they are being free cheaply because of the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Salabayabas. Let all the other names fade away Till there's only you Let all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place Let all the other names fade away Oh, the other names fade away. Say, there's only you, Jesus. 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 Jesus.
anointing is dead enough for able to make statements. Rise on your feet. Rise, rise to your feet, everybody. With boldness, call on the name of Jesus and address any situation with the name. Thank you, Jesus. Every song will shall be broken. You overcome. Balabasha Toto. Just continue. Every struggle shall be broken. You will have it all around. You overcome. You overcome. Every high. Talia Eteke Pakaloto Kosaha Labaras Lekro Diske Lubro Tosca di Kosanda Kalashtandi Lereke Sondro Kudibo Kaboska Lido Kosayaba In Jesus' name, I speak by the Spirit. I'm beginning with, I'm seeing in my spirit a woman. They are telling you, you need to come home and drink this or do that to conceive. Announce to them after this meeting, you don't need such. And in nine months from now, they will come for the dedication of those babies. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever has limited anybody is taken up right now. It's your season of shining, reigning, working in victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Shout victory. Salamandarabas. 
a couple is just taken out of a financial difficulty right now. It has looked like hell or not for this couple, but there is a timely intervention of the Father by the power of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anything that has to do with brain, the healing power of God touches the brain right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If at the old head region, head dig, uh, uh, whatever, whatever the name, migraine, whatever, the healing power of God is on you. And in the name of Jesus, I rebook migraine or any other disease out and leave these bodies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We worship you. Someone's BP that is extremely elevated is brought back to normal right now. Jesus will give you praise. Glory to your name. Put our hands together and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to implore you now to give your heart to Christ and by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.